Welcome back. Tzvi Broker here with Review Shore Gersey. And today's topic is one of those topics that just don't really get much attention. And the truth is just not really spoken about enough. And as a result of that, you know, like so many of the things that we're speaking about here in our podcast, it leads to unnecessary confusion, right? Well-intentioned people, but just end up being confused. So we know when it comes to our businesses, we know when it comes to work, there's a need for us to be out there. There's a need for us to put on our best tie, our best suit, to be able to speak confidently, to be able to speak powerfully. And at the same time, you know, it, when it comes to Avodah Hashem, when it comes to Musr, when it comes to seeing Svarim about our personal growth, we have this idea of Tznias, right, which people generally translate as modesty. Right? And we have this idea of Anava, which is commonly translated as being humble, humility. And it would seem that being a, somebody, who, somebody who was manifesting tzniyas and somebody who's a balanava, it would seem like they're kind of off to the side. They're staying away from center stage. It's a more of a passive role. So the question is, how does it work when it comes to our jobs and it comes to our businesses where it would seem that in order for us to be out there and to be successful, maybe we have to give up on having their heretz? What do you say of Grozzy? I think, um, if I can share, I think there's such an important nakuda of defining midas, definitions of midas. So, what do I mean by this? That we speak in our language about tikkun hamidas. We speak about devekas. We speak about emuna. We speak about bitachon hishtadlus. We speak about snias, and. Sometimes what happens is that we're not actually relating to that which is it. So I'm not actually relating to sneers. So I'm not relating to a muna or devekas. Why, we may ask? It's a good question. Why? Because I'm relating to modesty. I'm not relating to sneers. I'm relating to modesty. Meaning the, the English I, translation I, yeah, of what we... A lot of the time, I may have fallen away from the actual translation I, I may have fallen away from the actual definition of what the word is. That's number one. And as well, I think one of the biggest issues I find I speak, when I speak to people, one of the biggest issues that I, I, I come across day in, day out, is that people don't know necessarily the definition of a particular middah because we don't necessarily, in our education, speak about the middah. We speak around the middah. Right, right. So we're told, have more emuna, have more emuna, be more sneers, be more sneers. And then we're told, you know, we're, we're not told necessarily what it is. We speak around it. I think we mentioned this in one of the these sessions mm -hmm. some time ago. We don't speak about it. And then when we do speak about it, it's only one dimension of it. It's only one dimension of the middah. So number one, Definition. What do we mean by definition? So are we actually relating to the middah or are we relating to a translation or translations of the middah? That's number one. Number two is are we speaking about the middah or are we speaking around the middah? And I, I you know, I, I think it's, and this is something which we're very passionate about because my teachers, the, you know, they, they charged me with carrying on a tradition where we speak about the mid itself. And and Mashal Rav Volbi would say that when we're speaking about Midais, Tikkun Hamidais, it's a sugya that needs to be deepened, amplified, expressed, like any other sugya in Shas. Wow. And and yeah. that's one of the issues that I that's think a, that's a tall calling, yeah. you know, because you know when it comes to sugyas and shas, you know we can spend uh, we can spend the whole entire month, you know, trying to understand a certain idea, a certain concept, you know. But when it comes to midos, you know, often it can just be like you know hearing a sheer, hearing an idea, seeing a parsha sheet, like ah, you know, we have to work on this and work on that without actually thinking about what that really is, what that really is. You know, and so what, what I'm understanding what you're saying is, is that without having a proper understanding, you know, we can have people that, you know, are waving the flag of Tznias and waving the flag of Anava, you know, and, and, and it could be in this area of when it comes to work and when it comes to, where it comes to business, where people are acting in a certain way with a certain intention, but it's actually not at all what it means to be. I, I think I mentioned to you before once there was um, a certain young lady and a lot of people knew her, and what was the word that came up when 
They spoke about this young lady. Sneers, she's so sneers, so sneers. And there was a certain tzaddik who, when they heard the name and they said, sneers, so sneers, she said, don't get mixed up. She's not sneers, she's insecure. Wow. And I think sometimes, you know, do we present ourselves in the name of a particular midder and actually, no, you're hiding something. So, for example, are you not going out there when you should be going out there in the name of sneers, but really it's just you're insecure? Or maybe a person's going out there in the name of, you know, like, ah, oh, you know, Avedah Sashem, but really it's Gaiva. Right. Like, sometimes it, it, it's, a, it's delicate because sometimes I could be doing something in the name of Taira, in the name of Tikkun, in the name of Midais, and it's not, it's, it's hiding something. You know, I remember just a, another, you know, in regards to the sneer story, remember somebody who would sit and steig and steig and steig and steig and, and uh, everyone's praising this person. But the Mashgiach actually said, something's off here, something's off. It ended up being the person had OCD. That was what was really and, driving and, their behavior. And, 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 and yeah, and it was, so it, there's a sensitivity. When we speak about sneers, what is it? Is it sneers or is it something else? Am I doing something because of a particular middle or am I doing it because it's covering up something? It's covering something. That's fascinating. So I think in you know, this topic where we're speaking about over here, which what we find in our professional lives, you know, there is there is a need. There's a need for a person to radiate a sense. I think the best word confidence, would be confidence. Yeah, so the best yeah. word would be, would be confidence. Where you know we've all we've all either you're like that yourself, or you've met people, you've seen people like this that they radiate confidence. It's just a certain majestic energy of a person that's radiating confidence, which for for some people it could come across as being as a balgaiva, and that's just something which is mistaken. Where do we find in the Torah, I know that we've had many conversations about this, what would you want to share together with everyone today, where we find, you know, the Torah in Chazal speaking about these sort of types of anhagas, these sort of types of behaviors, and seeing how to understand it. I think there's a lot of them. It's not just one. There's a lot of them. Start you with have Hillel. Let's go with Hillel. You, 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 what, no, we'll so what Hillel. does Hillel we'll share say? Share with Hillel, because this one if I remember. I'm, if I'm here, <laughs> hakol, everything is here. All is here. If yeah. I'm here, all is here. But it's not just Rav Hillel. What about Rabbi Yossi? Similar sort of statements. I'm the, you know, uh, humility. If I'm, if I'm around, humility <laughs> around <laughs> is around. <laughs> what <laughs> about <laughs> Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai? In a few different places, you have in, um, in, in, in uh, a couple of, I mean, there's a few, two places in Chazal come up. There's a Medrash, speaks about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai. He can mevatl all the din in the world. He can, he can heal the world. He can get rid of everyone's averas. Right, speaking, you find people that are speaking about themselves. Yeah, they're speaking about, about themselves, themselves in a way. And even call, that, they're using that as a balanava. That that's with Rav Yossi is saying that yeah. if I'm here, humility is here. That's something which it seems complete opposite. Seem like, what about like what here. about what about one of my heroes, one of my teachers, Rabbi <laughs> Nachman? Everyone gets so uh, you know bent out of shape, Rabbi Nachman, where Rabbi Nachman says in a couple of places that he was great as the Tanaim. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, and uh, you know Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabbi Shimon, and 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 the Rizal, and even his Elter Zayda, and he's great. He's more. He's Kailel. He's Kailel. So I, I think there's context. I think these wild Chazal. I, th I love. First of all, I love them. I love it. I, I have no problem with it. But it's context. And if we understand that context, if we understand what this Chazal is actually trying to communicate to us, it's really empowering. Right. It's very, very empowering. Yes, it gives us a perspective of how we're meant to be viewing ourselves and how we're meant to be manifesting and even sharing messages about ourselves. You know, especially when you understand who these people were. You know, who these people were. We're talking about, you know, Hillel. We're talking about Rishim and Bar Yochai. Right? People that we can't even Rabbi comprehend. Yossi. Rabbi Nachman. Like, comprehend. And then they're saying these statements. So how would you say? Well, it sounds like there's this, uh, 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 there's this thin line. If you were to say there's this thin line. On one hand, we have confidence. Right? And it seems that confidence is something which is needed and something which is positive. And then there we have ego. You know? <laughs> so, and it's, is it confidence? Or is it ego? So how, how, would you, how would you suggest the ability to be able to discern between the two? Maybe, may, maybe we could do it in two ways. Maybe 
maybe to speak a little bit about Sneus okay. and then to go to your question. So I, I think like this, we're going to start maybe just give a few minute definition. Let's see if we can pull this off. So first of all, Sneus is a sugya within itself. Sneus is a sugya. We'll start at the end of the sugya. Okay, we'll start. Let, let's take Esther Hamalka and let's ask a couple of questions about Esther Hamalka. First of all, Esther Hamalka was known as what? Sneus. So at first, Esther Hamalka hid her identity from the, from the king, from everyone within the story. She hid her identity. She's called Sneus. Okay. So let me ask you a question. When she then revealed her identity, is she no longer Sneus? You hear the question? Meaning once she was out there and it was known who she was, is, does, is that, she does now, that take does away, that take away? away from So her? we see, no, it's not true. She's still Sneus. That's, that's, not, that's number one. So it's interesting that in the world of Sneus, in the world of the definition of Sneus, when she hid her identity, she was considered Sneus. And then when she revealed her identity, she's still considered Sneus. Also, also, we have something very interesting as well, which the Sfarim link into Sneus, and that is this Nakuda that Mordechai says to Esther, if you do not take this role, I want you to know the Jews will be saved and they'll be saved by someone else. That's very interesting as well. Like, you know, if somebody needs the chizuk, what are you going to tell them? You could do it. Yes, you could do it. But no, you go and tell her if she's in this situation, you got to tell her, no, don't worry. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. So there, like, make that choice. Where's the chizuk? What, what, what's going on? So the Sfarim, the Roshayim come and they excavate the understanding of Sneas as well. It's something to do with this Nakuda of, of something else, which we'll go into. So maybe we could start off with two positions to express within this Nakuda of Sneas. Number one is Sneas is to do with where you are. Number one is Sneas is the understanding of who you are. What are your Kaychas Hanefesh? What are your koichas and nefesh? So, for example, Meisha Rabbeinu is the most humble person around. Humility, no one can match right. Meisha Rabbeinu. Yet, he's the greatest Navi that ever lived. And he, he knows that. He knows that. And it doesn't mean that he's now less humble when he knows who he is. Humility is not like, oh, I am a Nebuch and I'm... No, humility, another, let's use the term in our language, Loshna Kaidesh, another, another, and very similar to Sneas, is not losing and pushing down and suppressing your Koychas HaNefesh. No, Pum Faket. When we speak about Sneas, when we speak about Sneut, and when we speak about another, humility, it's knowing who you are. And it's living who you are fully. I'm fully engaged and fully present with who I am. I know who I am. So really, it takes work, it takes personal growth. It takes work to become snua because you have to know who you are. It takes work to become humble because you have to know who you are. That's number one. So non the knowledge of who you are, a mastery, a self-mastery, what am I good at? What am I not so good at? What are my likes? What are my dislikes? Self-mastery. That's, I would say, one and the first part of Sneas that we can share right now. The second akuda of Sneas, Sneut, what we call modesty, is knowing your environment. It's knowing your environment. It's knowing where you are and having the ability to assess where am I and who am I, but as well, what is my environment like? So in the work of Sneas, in the work of Sneas, so Dain Lopian would say that what is considered Sneas in one community may not be considered Sneas in another community. What's considered Sneas in, in a particular community there is not considered Sneas. I remember one example. I remember one example. When I went to America the first time, um, I noticed women were wearing um, uh, red, what's it called? Nail polish. Nail polish. And I said to Rabbi Singer, like in England, I, I, I never noticed it in England. I know my mother never wore like these bright colors. And Rabbi Singer says, yeah, you know, by, by the chassidim, by the chare, a lot of chare, a lot of people, they wear the colored nail polish. 
And in London, they didn't have that. So Rabbi Singer says, yeah, in London, it wouldn't be Sneas. In America, it's Sneas. There's a lot of context, environmental-based aspects to Sneas. And then there's knowing yourself. So they, that's part A and part B of one. Knowing who you are, knowing your environment. But then another Nakuda of Sneas is recognizing you belong to something very big. That's where Kaddish Baruch is coming in. Yeah. And withdrawing right. from something very big. So what did Mordechai tell Esther? You can choose to be part of the process, part of the Hishtadlus, part of this unfolding process or not. So again, when I know who I am in context to my environment, and I choose to be an Evid Hashem, that means I'm drawing, I'm part of something big. Then through these sharings that we've just shared, we can learn to be more sneers. So what I think that would translate as, when, for example, somebody's in the marketplace or you know, on, on multimedia, they could ask themselves, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this? Am I, is it my koich Is this my koich? Okay, is it, is it, am I, I, what's the context with the environment around me? And am I, am I mamash being Megala HaKadosh Baruch in the world? Am I being Megala HaKadosh Baruch in the world? And sometimes actually you standing up, okay, this is who I am. In context with the world around me, this is what people do. And I'm doing it to Megala HaKadosh Baruch in the world. I'm, do, I'm fitting in. That's considered sneers. Well, so what I'm hearing is, is that is, is that what ends up, you know, helping us to determine for ourselves, you know, whether or not what I'm going to be doing, whether what I'm going to be posting, you know, the resume I'm going to be writing, where we'll speak about in a moment, different examples. But that sort of type of you know, distinction boils down to whether or not I see that which I'm doing and that which I'm radiating as being manifesting HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world through my unique kochos, or whether or not is disconnected from a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and is just pumping up my own ego. And it seems that from what you're saying is, is that it's, it's the first step in order for this all to start, you know, in order for us to even be somebody who has Tzniyas, in order for us to be somebody who is a Balanava, is to go through that process of knowing your strengths, of knowing your talents, and, and, and having that deep understanding. That's where things start, that's the Aleph base. And then once we have that, then when, when we're able to understand that all that we have, right, all that we have and that which we've achieved, right, and we're able to, is, is an expression and manifesting a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and it's coming from a Kaddish Baruch Hu, then we're able to go out there and to have those conversations and to be able to present ourselves in a way where we're able to do it with confidence. I would add as well one more Nakuda that we, we spoke about before, and that is the Nakuda of, of consciousness. That you can only really achieve any Midah, as we know the Svarim tell us, first is just to be not, not self-aware, but awareness, Das. That, to be conscious, I'm a conscious being, and I can, I can hear myself, I can know myself, I can know the world around me. And then I can choose to draw down from a Kodesh Baruch Hu and bang. Right. I mean, that's, that's ultimately the vessel and the clean in which this, this whole entire process is able to take place. Because yes. if, if you have a person right, who who's, doesn't have this dust and doesn't have this, what, you know, what we expressed as having this level of self-awareness and being able to see really what's going on inside of themselves, so then it's very, very difficult to be able to know, you know, that post I'm going to put out there, you know, that presentation I'm going to be saying, that elevator pitch, is it coming from a place of Anava, or is it coming from a place of, and, of Gaiva? And I don't think we always know. Like, the, I don't think we always know. Um, our family, we had a bus mitzvah. A couple of days ago, when we had a bus mitzvah. And the bus mitzvah girl's father has written a number of svarim. He's a machabah, beautiful svarim. And it's an amazing thing, because when we went to his house, you know, I asked him, where, what, what svarim have you written? And he, he opens the front door, and I saw it when I went, and I wasn't sure what it was, but it's all the svarim he has written. So his Rosh Yeshiva said, put it up on, you have to put it up on the door, all the svarim that you've written. So he mentioned he wasn't going to do it, but it's to be proud. It's to be proud. Anava, Anava is, is knowing your koichas anafesh, but then everybody's got something good to give in this world. And everybody gives it differently. There's no such thing. And it's only in the last number of years, really, this has become such a big question. 
We didn't have multimedia the way we had multimedia. So in the last 10 years, seven, I wouldn't say 10, 10 years, five years, even five, five, six years, people really, you know, on, on, the, on the different streams of, of Twitter and, and Facebook and, and, and whatever it is, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> you know, they put Facebook, Twitter and, and YouTube together. It's called UTwitface. <laughs> <laughs> it's my joke that we've used for the last 20 odd years. But this is a question. No, it's so funny what you're this saying because I, I was thinking about this uh, when I was on the way to do this podcast with you that, um, you know, because I love to sp I love to work with people and help people to understand as you do, I'm saying different types of personalities. I feel like um, until, you know, the, the last bunch of years were really because of media and, and on social media, social media platforms have really grown. Like there wasn't really room for that guy who didn't have the guts to kind of like really be out there and be super confident because like if you wanted to do it, like to do you, it. you had to actually be able to get up in front of people, yes. have that conversation, yes, exactly. look the guy in the eye, yeah. you know, and, and play the part. But like now, even those people that don't have that and they would never be able to do that in an actual, you know, real people setting, just like, okay, I can click, I can post and suddenly you can have this situation. And like you said as well, because now, you know, everyone's an author. You know, if you haven't written a book yet, you know, it's, it's this opportunity. It used to be like a chiddush. Now it's, it's it, everyone has, it, it's, you can look at it from a, a from a, uh, a negative way, but like we're sharing, it's an, it's actually a positive and amazing thing where Hashem, who is obviously in, behind all of this, has created us to live in times where we have the ability on some level more than any other time that's ever existed, existed for each person to be able to manifest their own unique light. You can manifest your own unique light beautiful. in a very beautiful way while that wasn't something that people were able to share. And really what it boils down to, you know, is 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 us becoming aware within ourselves of what's really motivating us. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's funny you said about that Rav that really encouraged, you know, encouraged the person to go out there and, yeah, go and publish your farm. Yes. Because sometimes we need to have that mentor. And that's why, you know, here in Pilsner, we're always speaking about, it's one of the RBSOs of mentorship. The person needs to have a Rav who understands the person, who understands you, and knows that for you, you know, it's important that you put out this publication. For you, it's important, you know, that you have that Spitz LinkedIn profile. You need that because it's something that I've thought for myself is just from my own experiences going through different professional challenges and growth moments is, is that on some level, when it comes to finance and when it comes to career, it really can push us out of our comfort zone yes. that we have could have avoided our whole entire lives. Because when it comes to our Vodas Hashem, right, when it comes to our learning, right, when it comes to our relationships, even when it comes to within marriage and within children, a person could hide. A person could decide, you know, f you know what, I'm not going to radiate that confidence that maybe I should be. I'm not going to really go out there and present myself the way that I should be because, like, maybe it's insecurity, like you shared that story with that woman. Maybe it's just insecurity. And, and, and I know, you know, from personal experiences I've been in, sometimes it is insecurity. Sometimes it's just insecurity. That's the reason why I don't want to be making that video. And that's the reason why I'm not going to go out there because I feel there is a level of insecurity. But when it comes to our jobs and when it comes to having to have that courageous conversation, as you, as, as Rebbe, you like to share that language, a courageous conversation with the boss, or you have to be able to go to the networking event, Right? Or you have to write that resume. You know, as I sat with people and they're writing the resumes, you have to do it. It's, 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 it's not a choice. You're not going to be able to win that interview, you know, if you're not going to tell a story of success. You're not going to be able to have your resume recognized in the six seconds that people look at it, you know, if it's not going to tell the story of success. So, in some level, actually, our work and Parnassa creates an opportunity for us to experience personal growth that we may have otherwise just avoided. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's... You remind me of a story. One of my teachers, Rabbi Yosef Meir Weingott, um, when, when Baruch Shem Al-Zaycha, we learned a lot of Likut HaLochas, Likut Maran, he came from, he was the Av based in Sons. He was the Av based in in Sons. Um, and he was a, a breast of a chassid. He was a Talmud of Rav Avraham Sternhardt, who so was a great grandson or great great grandson of Rabbi Nossen. And I remember we're learning, and he says, When you're going to start to share in English of Lakote Maran, start to share in English of Lakote Maran, Rabbi Nishalaylam. 
I can't give a <laughs> shin Lakote Maran. And and he pushed me and he pushed me and he pushed me and we started a share in, in twenty you know, nineteen years ago we started a share and we went through each Tyra and I remember he said to me, he says, you know, if it wasn't the chizuk, if it wasn't for the chizuk of Rabbi Nachman, we would never have Lukute Alochas. Why? So Rabbi Avram Sternhardt said to him that Rabbi Nachman encouraged Rabbi Nosun to write a little bit. And then he says, write a little longer, write a little longer, more, more, more. And eventually there's this safer Lukute Halachas. <laughs> Lukute Halachas came from the chizuk of Rabbi Nachman. So it was in Rabbi Nosson, but it took time to come out. And we have to take that risk. We have to take that risk and come out of our comfort zone. And when we do, that's where we experience growth. Growth is not found within the comfort zone. Growth is found when we take the step out of the comfort zone. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. We experience discomfort. It's sometimes we're going to make a mistake. Sometimes we may do something and then we think to ourselves, okay, that was like coming from a place of guy. Right, wasn't especially clean. with such a thin line, you know, it could be that you know, we, we, we feel it's coming from a good place. And then afterwards we realize somehow some insecurity got in there. And what you're saying is that's okay because we're human yeah, beings and that's what's trial I, and error. But, that's it. but sometimes we can important. be so afraid yes. of feeling any sort of coming from ego that we just stay far away from it and situation. No, and, I, and I think it's very important to do a check-in. Like to do a check-in, check-in. Okay, I'm now going to do this part. And I try to do any share, any share, even now beforehand. What's our why? Just before we came on, um, the cameraman and Rav Heliger Rav Svi and myself, we know, why are we doing this? We're doing it for covered Shemaim, Be'ez Las Hashem. Doing it for covered Shemaim. And, and I often, I do a check-in before each share. Just stop for a moment. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. All our shirim, what do we say at the beginning of our shirim? Makabal upon ourselves, vahaftele recha kameicha. Makabal upon ourselves, al malchut shemaim, and invite the shechina. Just to prepare ourselves to stop, do a check in. Okay, I'm, 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 I've got the koiches hanefesh. I, this, is, this is who I am. I'm expressing my individuality to the world, and Hashem needs it. Hashem chooses to need it in the world that Hashem created. He needs us. There's no king without a nation. So He chooses to need us. Chazal, and and I I can be Hakadosh Baruch Hu. I desperately, Mamish, I want to be. I want to be that vehicle to spread your light. So just to stop, to take a breath. Okay, why am I doing this? I'm doing this for the revelation of Yeshua Gazi, which is the revelation of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The context, the world around me. It's healthy for me to do this. Bang! Let's go, let's go. And I've got my teachers, I've got my friends, and we all keep each other in check. And we make this world through coming forward, through standing outside, standing out of our comfort zone, make this world a more beautiful, wholesome, fantastic place. Wow. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a, such a golden tool that you just shared. And I know in Pilsno, this is the, the foundations of everything, you know, is, is taking that second before we do something to do that check-in, you're recognizing the fact that we're human beings and therefore we're going to have different thoughts, we're going to have different feelings. We may have a thought of insecurity, we may have a thought of a little bit of, you know, of, uh, of this, a little bit of that, but to take that second and then make that choice that right now I'm choosing to radiate confidence to manifest HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world. And, and ultimately we know, and this is, you know, if you've ever watched any TED talk about, you know, being, being, being a uh, powerful and about about being influential we know that to be successful you need to radiate confidence to be successful you need to be able to share a, a compelling story i always tell us to people i meet with when they're preparing for interviews don't just show up there and say please hire me no one wants that they want somebody who's going to be able to come and tell a compelling story the question is is, is that internally as you tell that story are you telling the story of Tzvi Broker? Are you telling the story, right, of, 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 of trying to be able to toot your own horn? Or are you telling the story of how you, are, you have manifested a Baruch Hu in oh, the world? Beautiful. How have you had the ability through this job, through this opportunity, that through the talents that Hashem put into us, through the skills, through the interests that Hashem brought me through in my life, I've been able to manifest Hashem in the world. Now, you may not be able to share all of that with the person you're talking to, doesn't mean you show up in an interview and say, Baruch Hashem every three seconds. You know, Pez Hashem every three seconds, especially if it's not going to know what you're talking about. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. 
But internally, internally, the question is, what's the narrative that we're sharing? What's yeah. the narrative yeah. we're sharing? So I think that's, a, that's a, and, and this check-in is the, is the goal, because that gives us the ability to be able to know where things are coming from. And then I could be an individual with my koiches and nefesh, and I'm, I'm shining HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world through me, and it's helping all human beings. It's helping Am Yisrael. I'm part of a nation. I'm part of a nation. And through my little Aveda, I'm making the nation greater. I'm helping humanity. We're part of something big. Right, right. and Hashem wants each one of us to be confident. Hashem wants His children to be confident. He wants us to sit straight up, head up, be confident. Whatever you're doing, recognize that you have a Kadosh Baruch Hu behind you. And what we've seen today has been so important, such an important message, you know, to understand the difference between confidence and ego. It can be confusing, it can be confusing, but when we have a proper definition of what does it mean to be somebody who has Sneas, the proper definition, right, of somebody who's a Balanava, and we use the tool of self-awareness, you can follow in the, in the footsteps of the Sadiq, and we spoke about of Hillel, Rabbi Yoisi, Rabbi Shimon, and understand that it's... Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Na Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman, right, and in the footsteps of, of all of the Tzadikim, all of the Tzadikim that are, are inviting us, inviting us to, yes, to radiate the greatness that Hashem implanted inside of each and every one of us. So I think just as we wrap up, we'll just throw out a challenge for you. You know, is that for you, to, for each one of us to think, what area of my life right now might I be holding myself back from because I just don't feel so comfortable being more confident? And that might be, you know, updating your LinkedIn profile the way that it really should be, or it might be deciding, you know what, I should really just leave this job I'm in right now because I can do better. I can do better. Or it might be that conversation that you're just push, you know, holding back from having with your boss and basically speaking about something you're not, you're not happy with. Just each person in your own life right now, what's one area in your job, what's one area in your profession, in your finances, where because of this sort of type of lack of clarity, about how important it is to be confident and what that means. Where are you holding yourself back? And our invitation to you is to take that step. Use the tools that we've discussed here today, the check-in, manifest the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and become great. Amen.